fuck me, I, I've just hit over 200 hours on Don't Starve, which is a lot considering it's an indie game I picked up for $15 on the Steam store. So um, I may as well not let it go to waste and share a few of my succulent, juicy tips with you in this video. I hope you enjoy. <music> Now, first tip, I know it sounds really basic, but many people don't actually know you can do it. You just hold F to continuously attack an enemy instead of spamming left click. You can also use Control F to auto attack neutral creatures such as pigs or beefalo. You can even use this technique to kill a single spider by punching them to death because of their stun lock. Shift click to quickly move stacks around in chests or containers. And Control left click to split a stack in half. You can also control left click while having the stack held by your cursor to place individual items of that stack. However, it can't be in your inventory. So that was just discussing some peripheral controls. Let's now talk about what you need to get a very solid start on this game. When looking for a location to build your main base, you want to have three things in mind. Beefalo, rabbit, and a central map position. Firstly, and most importantly, beefalo are essential as they provide protection from hounds right through to the late game, in fact, because they're bloody tough. They also provide wool for winter, and they provide a constant source of manure, which is great stuff for farming and for fertilizing. Now, if you can't get yourself a beefalo herd, a pig village is a viable alternative. Similarly to beefalo, they provide protection from hounds. If you feed them, they also give you manure, and as a bonus, they usually come with pre-built farms, which is really good for getting you up and running in the early game. However, they are definitely not as strong as beefalo herds. They don't breed by themselves, and you have to watch out for them on the full moon as they all turn into pig savages. But the power of the pig is something to be harnessed, and I'll touch on that later. So the second thing you want to look out for when building your first base is rabbit holes. It's kind of obvious why you want rabbit holes. I mean, the more the merrier. Uh, they just give you a constant source of food during winter, as long as you've stocked up on grass and twigs to continually make the traps, of course. A good way to speed up the production of morsels from rabbits is by placing a trap between the rabbit and its hole, and then running around behind the rabbit and scaring it into the trap. And lastly, it is very important to build your main base on the central position on the map. This is why it's very important to go scouting in the early game for the first few days, just to get a sense of where all the different biomes are, so you can make an educated guess as to where the optimum location would be for you to build a central base. Wickerbottom is the best character for early game scouting, as she can build anything from the first tier science machine straight off the bat. No mucking around to get gold for a spear, backpack or shovel. If you don't do any of this scouting and just build your base wherever, you'll find yourself spending a significant amount of your time travelling. And as you probably know, in Don't Starve, time is a premium. So you've got your base set up in a central position on the map, you've got lots of rabbits nearby, and there's a one or two beefalo herds floating around somewhere. Great, you're off to a good start. If you haven't already, you'd want to try and aim for a crockpot as soon as possible, which requires charcoal. Plant your excess pine cones in an isolated field and wait for them to grow. It shouldn't take long before each pine cone turns into a small tree, at which point you can easily just burn them all down for a nice stockpile of charcoal. And if you're playing as Willow, standing in this bushfire will give you quite the sanity boost. As you continue to develop your little base, you'll find yourself accumulating more and more monster meat. Initially I thought monster meat was the worst piece of meat in the game, but I later learned that that's not true. Monster meat is amazing. Use it to enslave a village of pigs. Get them to chop down your trees before sending them to their death at the hands of a tree guard, a tentacle monster, or anything you desire. Feed a pig four monster meat and he turns into a whir pig. And killing a whir pig is quite easy to do. You just hit him twice, dodge his attack, hit him twice, dodge his attack, repeat until you kill him, and then you get the nice reward of one pig skin and two meat. This is a guarantee drop unlike a normal pig which would uh, unfortunately only give you a 25% chance of a pig skin, let alone a 75% chance for a single meat. So every time you have an excess of monster meat just farm were pigs and get their skins and then use those skins to make pig huts near your base and make football helmets and hand bats to continue this process over and over and over again until you have an enormous pig village right at your doorstep to defend anything. 
And if you keep this up, you may find yourself under the terrible pressure of having an abundance of meat. But not to worry, all you do is slap it on your drying racks, which you've made from your charcoal plantation, and there you go, you have beef jerky, one of the longest lasting and best foods in the game. All thanks to Whirpig Farming, Fire, that's right, wants to meet. Which, by the way, also has a meat value of one, good for that meaty stew, and you can also feed it to a bird in a bird cage to get yourself an egg. So, monster meat. It's not that bad after all. And now I'd like to talk about what I think is one of the most OP fruits in the game, and that is the dragon fruit. Put one dragon fruit, one, in a crock pot, and fill the rest of it up with sticks, and you have yourself dragon pie. Now, as of now, Dragon Pie gives you 40 health, 75 hunger, and 5 sanity. So the first time a farm gives you a dragon fruit, straight away feed it to your bird in your bird cage, pick up the seeds and plant it all around the rest of your farm. And so begins the process of dragon fruitification. Now my friend got totally caught up in this when we were playing Don't Sell Together, he just, that's, that's all he did. Like for bloody 100 days straight, he just farmed dragon fruit. That's all he did, I'm not even kidding. Of course you don't need to go to that extreme, but the general message here is dragon fruit is amazing. The last type of food I'd like to draw attention to is the green cap. The other two mushrooms in the game, green and red, cooked or uncooked, don't really provide that much of a stat boost to the player. But a cooked green cap restores 15 sanity at the cost of 1 health. So green caps are really good in the early game when you don't have the luxury of, of taffy or beef jerky like you would in the late game. Now I'm just going to tack on a few miscellaneous tips to the end of this video, so just bear with me. Wearing a football helmet actually gives you 20% water resistance despite not degrading over time. On a full moon, and only on a full moon, you can place a single nightmare fuel in every one of Chester's carrying slots, which will upgrade him into a shadow Chester with an additional 3 slots, so he has a total of 12 carrying slots. And lastly, don't be wasteful with your fuel. Use your low percentage log and grass suits to erupt the fire into a blaze of glory. If you get anything out of today's video, just remember the golden three things for when you're planting your base, beefalo, rabbit, and a central position. And lastly, don't underestimate the power of green caps, monster meat, and dragon pie. Thanks so much for the view. Bye bye